All right, here we are. Once again, I'm Pastor Bobby D. Hamilton, and it is Move Monday. If you see my face, you know what it is on a Monday. I'm talking about moving. In the words of the Godfather of Soul, James Brown, it's time to get on up. I want to encourage this morning, Arturo, get on up. Broussard, get on up. My good friend, Ibrahim, Ibrahim, get on up. The Johnson family, it's your time to roll over and roll out and to get on up. Ken and Michelle Williams, get up and get moving. And there's a multitude of others that you know that today is your day. And I just thank you for what I've been hearing from you and what I've been seeing you doing. And, and I want to thank you for just committing to make some area of moving, some, some determination. I got to give a big old shout out to the Gilmores to Jeff and Sharonda Gilmore. I'm giving them a big shout out because I've watched them over the past year. I've watched them make a dedication to moving. I've watched them go get personal trainers. I've watched them with their videos. I've, I've watched them make a, a lifestyle change. And even even, even that, 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 that nutrition has just radically changed. And I've watched them just be transformed. They're an older couple. Oh, but they're an older couple, but they look like a younger couple because they purposed in their hearts that they were going to move. They were going to do something about their body, do something with the, with the body God gave to them. That's what this is about. This isn't about you just being someone who's a world-class athlete. It isn't about you someone that spends thousands of dollars on a Peloton machine. It's not about you being someone who from sunrise to sunset, you just do push-ups all day long. It's about understanding that as a part of us being a, being a, being a steward of our temples, we take care of it. So we, we, we take care of what we eat, but also we take care that we set aside a day to exercise, to ambulate, to move our bodies, to, to find a creative way to find what works. And that's what I've been telling people, just find what works for you and just do it and habitually do it. Don't just do it one time. Some of you at work right now, and I understand this time of morning, you cannot get up and just move, but you can move on your lunch break and you can move when the day's over. Don't just come home and say how difficult the day was and slump down and grab a big old meal and just go to sleep. Don't do that. Encourage yourself to say, I'm gonna start moving. I'm gonna go buy some tennis shoes. Or here's a novel idea. Where the ones you already have and say, I'm going to set aside some time to begin move, whether I do it by myself or I do it with my friends or my neighbor, or I do it with my kin folks, whoever I'm going to, I'm just going to decide, I'm just going to get out and start moving. I've heard from so many of you and that you're doing it and what a praise. And there's so many of you who are contemplating doing it. I want to help your contemplation. I want to move you from a, from a paralysis of overanalysis. You've been paralyzed with trying to analyze the move and just move. And let us know what your move was. Because maybe you, you, you tapped into something that we could all use in our, in our dedication to being movers on that job. Why not, you, why, why not park further away from the office? And that allows you to, to walk more. And that constitutes what? Move. Walking further away, further to... The, the stairs, you can use the stairs during your lunch break. That constitutes what? An actual move. What about something as simplistic? Something as simplistic as that I am just going to do some knee bend. I'm gonna do some knee, I'm gonna do 35 knee bends. 35 knee bends. And, and that constitutes a move. You say, well, Pastor, I got bad knees. I can't move like, that's okay, that's okay. Can you just do some calf raises? Hold the wall. Let the wall hold you and just lift up your calves. There's so many things you can do. Some of you are using bands. Some of you are using kettlebells. Some of you are, are, are using just your own body weight. There's so many things to do. Age is not a restriction. You can just find a creative way to just move. For some of you say, well, I, you don't understand me. I'm wheelchair bound. That's okay. You got some strong, strong biceps and triceps. You can still constitute that as a move. Just whatever it is, just don't accept I can't. We can. Oh, yes, we can. And let me just say, I want to thank all of you who prayed for me because yesterday I had my first half marathon of 2021. Hadn't been able to run ma marathons in two years, but had my first one on yesterday here at the Houston half. And, and, and thank God for your prayers. Thank God for your input. And I just thank God for the opportunity to finish. And I was able to do it, put on my mask and went out and ran a little bit in my mask and then took off my mask and, and all that. And so, but God worked that whole thing out. And so I just thank you for encouraging me to move and to go back and run. What a joy it was. But when I finished running yesterday, I ran to church. 
And I ran to church because God allowed me to preach a word yesterday. I got back with the people of God at the Great Friendship Church. And I talked about hanging on to your hope. Because hope is a thing that has become a fleety, has, has become a, has, has a flight. It is, it, is, it is forsaken so many of us. There's so many people that you know and I know, we read about, we hear about, we live with, we work with, we're we around who've lost hope. They're living in a state of despair and despondency and discouragement and deep depression because they just lost hope. Somebody this past week, maybe it's you, got some terrible news. Somebody last week, maybe it's you, got some horrifying news. And, and it just, it's like a sucker punch. It just sucker punch your spirit and you lost hope. You have no hope. And you know, if you're honest about it today, since we're being truthful on Move Monday, we do some dumb things when we lose hope. Oh, oh, say amen, lights and walls. Because you know that when we lose hope, we can do some dumb, dumb stuff. Think about some of the people you've been with because you had lost hope. Think about some of the decisions you made because you lost hope. Think about some things you put into your body because you lost hope. Think about some agreements you made, some purchases you made because you lost hope. Think about some places that you went that you should not have gone because what you lost hope. Think about some things you've discarded and thrown away because you lost hope is a losing hope is a dangerous thing. But in Romans 4, 18 to 21, I talked about Abraham. Paul talked about Abraham as, a, as an illustration of a man who operated by faith. And we talked about that hope is not a wish, it's not an aspiration. It's not a four-leaf clover. It's not, oh, I just wish it would happen. It's, 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 it's not this, this, this high, high optimism either. It's rooted in the confidence and the clarity of the character of God, that God would do exactly what he said he would do. And that's what hope is. It's grounded in God. And so we talked about having hope, hope against hope. When it seems foolish, it seems wasteful. It seems it seems that it's not going to happen. And yet Abraham still had faith in God. I told you on yesterday that God put Abraham in a situation that nobody could help Abraham and Sarah but God. And that's not just for Abraham. That's also true for you today. God has some of you right now in a situation that nobody can help you. Nobody can help your child. Nobody can help your spouse. Nobody can help your aging parents but God. And I'm saying today you got to make up your mind to have hope, to have faith. Now, here's what, what's required. We've all heard of things called scavenger hunts. When you go looking for things, you, you go searching for things. You, you, just, you just dedicate yourself to be on the hunt. Well, what about a scripture hunt? What about today if you set aside this day to do a scripture hunt, to do a deep dive in the word of God? Because it's about what has God promised. And so you need to do a scripture hunt for the promises of God. What promises can you hunt down, can you hang on to? Let me say that again. What scripture hunt, not a scavenger hunt, can you hunt down and hang on to? Our hope is so elusive. Our hope leaves us. Our hope has us in despair and drunkenness. And it has us doing a myriad of things that bring no glory, no honor to God. And we're not happy with it ourselves because we have not learned to do a deep dive in the scripture and stand on the promise of God. What has God promised you? He's promised a whole lot. And I'm saying that's what you must stand on. Oh, my brother. Oh, my sister. That's what you must stand on. The promises of God. God. Not just simply the hearsay of God, not what, not the secondhand information about God. Go find for yourself. What's the problem? What's the problem you have there? Can you find a corresponding promise for the problem you have? You're only going to find it if you go on a scripture hunt. If you do a deep dive into the authority of the word of God, God wants to encourage your soul. It doesn't mean you're going to be happy all the time. It doesn't mean that money's coming. It doesn't mean that, 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 that you got a breakthrough. That's a breakthrough on the way. But the breakthrough is tied to what the Bible says. The Bible wants to be the source, God's word, God's glory of your breakthrough. And I'm saying today, today, my brother, today, my sister, today, my cousin, today, my nephew, today, my uncle, today, big mama, big dad. I'm saying today can be your day that you have hope. Oh, my goodness. We serve a God of hope. We serve a God that says, you know what? In spite of what you see. 
I'm bigger than that. In spite of what you heard, I'm greater than that. And God wants you to be able to live, to live, to live, to live. Don't just survive, but to live. But you got to have hope that lifts up your spirit and says, I believe because God said so. And I'm saying, but you can't say that unless you know what God said. So today, I want you to do a deep dive. Today, I'm on a scripture hunt. I know your children done scavenger hunt, but today, a scripture hunt. And when you find a scripture hunt, they want you to let us know, let somebody know. And I'm standing on the very word of God. As a matter of fact, I wish we had time right now because there's some people online right now. You already got a promise. You got two promises. You got three promises that you're standing on right now. I'm standing on the word of God. When the adversary attacks your mind, when the adversary lies to your mind, don't let his thoughts become your thoughts. Don't, don't buy into the lie. Confront the lie with the truth, with the truth of God's word word and hang on to your hope. You might lose a whole lot of things. You may lose some friends. You may lose some automobiles. You may lose some work hours. You may lead, lose some, some pay or career opportunities. But the one thing you better not lose. I hope you don't lose. I'm praying for you not to lose. And that is hope. Thank God for the hope we have in Jesus Christ. The hope, a living hope, the Bible says. We got hope because of the resurrection. We got hope because we're born again. Today, I want you to have hope. Go to YouTube and look at the sermon from yesterday and try to hang on to your hope that I preach from Friendship Community Bible Church. And on Wednesday night, we're going to deep dive some more because there's some more word that you got to get out of there because there's a passage in Jeremiah 15, 16 that I want to extrapolate. I want to exegete for you that can add to your arsenal of hope. What a mighty God we serve. We thank God for this day. Get up and move, get up and move. And while you're moving, go do a scripture hunt and stand on the word of God. We're standing, not on our problems, but we're standing on the promises of God. What a great day it is. Get up and move, get up and move, get up and move. I'll see you Wednesday night. Wow, what a day. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord.